Hi, I'm Carl, and in this video we're going to have a look at questions 10 to 15 of section 3 of the Green Booklet. The first set of questions is 10 to 13, and it's about the weight of a patient on a bed. Question 10 says, the force exerted by the floor on the bed is what? So we know that if the bed isn't falling through the floor, um, that the force is going down will be equal to the force is going up. So the force is going down in this case are 700 and 800 newtons, respectively, for legs X and Y. And therefore, acting on the floor, um, there has to be an opposite, an equal and opposite reaction. So the size of this force will just be 700 plus 800 newtons. And that will give us an answer at 1500 or 1500 newtons. And therefore, the answer for number 10 is going to be C. If we look at 11, then it says the mass of the patient is what? So we're told the mass of the bed and bedding is 90 kilograms. So the total combined mass, or we could say weight, is 1,500 newtons. And this, of course, is going to be equal um, to 150 kilograms. And we know this because the acceleration due to gravity um, is going to be 10. It's not 9.8 or something. In this case, it's nice and easy to work with. It's just 10. Um, so we know the combined weight is 150 kilograms. The weight of the patient plus the weight of the bed is going to be 150 kilograms. And um, we know the bed is going to be 90 kilograms. So the patient plus the bed is going to be 90 kilograms or 150. And therefore we can work out that the patient is 150 minus 90 kilograms. So the patient we know now weighs 60 kilograms. And that gives us an answer of B. 12 says, suppose the length of the bed, the horizontal difference between X and Y in the figure is L. A horizontal distance from Y is the center of gravity of the patient bedding and bedding described um, as a single body located. Okay, so the fact that it's a single body does simplify it. And let's just simplify it to one line. One end, we're going to write X and the other will write Y. We know that the weight is going to be 150 uh, kilograms or 1,500 newtons. But we know there is 800 newtons at Y and 700 from X. If they're combined, then that will give us um, 1,500. So the proportion of the weight at the side of the bed Y is going to be 800 over 1,500. And at X is going to be 700 over 1,500. Of course, we can simplify these to 7 over 15 and to 8 over 15. And that is a ratio of the proportions of the weight that is felt at either side of the bed. So if we were here at y, we know that more weight is on the side of y. So the because the this value um, for the force is greater at y than at x, you know that the center of mass is going to be on this side um, of the bed of this line because this side is heavier. And therefore, the distance between x and y, or the difference in L, is going to be um, 7 fifteenths, because that is less than half of the way along, and it's proportional to the amount of force felt here at x. If they were equal, of course, it would be in the middle, and if it was the opposite, then it would be 8 fifteenths. But from y, in this case, um, we know it's going to be 7 fifteenths of the way along, because we know that's a ratio and that exists between the forces on each of the legs. Question 13 says, suppose the nurse uses two identical weighing scales instead of one, and he places the pair of legs at X on scale A, and the same pair of legs at Y on scale B. In this case, the readings on the two scales would be what? Well, this question is going to show that it's actually going to be the same. If you read the stem, it says, assume the bed is stationary during weighing and the acceleration due to gravity is 10. That sentence says that because the bed is stationary during weighing, um, weighing it isn't going to change the mass. And so using two scales is going to show um, that because the same results, because there was no um, effect of weighing on the measurement you got because the bed was stationary during weighing. If you tilted the bed, then the center of mass would change. Uh, in position, and that would change the reading you get. For example, if you lifted up one pair of legs, you might get a different reading. But if you if you kept it stationary um, and horizontal, it would be the same as if you were to measure both legs at once. So of course, the answer for number 13 is going to be A. Great. So the next questions are questions 14 and 15, which we have here. 
and it says that there are redox reactions which take place and this is uh, something that we can look at in this question with carbon atoms. We're given five rules and there's some other ones you might already know um, for calculating redox reactions. These rules aren't ones I tend to follow generally but they're quite useful and we're lucky to be given them here and it says question 14 is that by calculating the oxidation numbers of all the carbon atoms in each of the following reactions determine which one is a redox reaction. Okay so remembering that a redox reaction is an oxidation and a reduction happening at the same time. We're looking just from the perspective of carbon atoms and we're saying um, if the oxidation numbers change and we're told how to work out the oxidation numbers um, from the perspective of carbon. So we'll start with A and see if we find one. So in this case we have um, a carbon with a double bond to an oxygen and rule three says that each bond to an atom that is more electronegative than carbon, in other words oxygen, increases the oxidation number by one. And rule five also says a multiple bond has a multiple effect. So because there's two bonds here, the oxidation number increases twice to plus two. If we look on the right hand side of the equation then, um, we can do the same. We can see that oxygen will increase the oxidation number by one. But also rule four says each bond to an atom that's less electronegative than carbon, for example hydrogen, decreases the oxidation number by one. And we have three directly bonded to the carbon here. And so that means overall we have a negative two. And because there has been a swing from positive to negative, a plus, two, plus two to a minus two, we know that this is going to be a redox reaction. So we know the answer for 14 is A. You can do the same to rule out the others. Um, there are a couple of different ways of looking at it. You could look at the molecule as a whole, but this just looks from the um, perspective of the carbon atom. Uh, I think it's quite an easy question because we're given the rules. 15 says, according to the rules listed above, the oxidation number of a carbon atom that has only one carbon bonded to it can be what? So I've drawn out a diagram to help explain this. This is a carbon atom that's bonded to only one more carbon atom. And if we were to put other atoms in these places, what would happen to the oxidation number? So really, we know that everything is either going to be more or less electronegative than carbon. So if it's more electronegative, I'll put a plus, and if it's less, I'll put a minus. So if we have a combination of pluses and minuses, we can see that we can get, um, this would be, for example, uh, plus three. And if we could change all these to negatives, we could go to minus three. And that would be the limit to what we could do, because carbon doesn't affect um, the oxidation number. And that's what rule two says. But what if we had um, this combination where we had a plus and two minuses? Well, of course, we'd end up with an oxidation number overall with essentially these two cancelling out of negative one. And there's no way of getting negative two. Actually, there's no combination. Even if we looked at maybe doing positive two, we could do plus plus and a minus. Um, these two would still cancel out. And so we end up with a plus one. If it was bonded to more carbon atoms then it would just be zero and so that that way we can say that it's any odd in, integer there's no way of getting plus two or negative two and the limits are going to be between plus three and negative three so the answer is going to be any odd integer from plus three to negative three. So the answer for number 15 is going to be C. That was questions 10 to 15 of section three of the green booklet